Welcome to Module 5 of the Hand in Hand Training, Preventing Abuse. So, the, for this module, you will be able to identify types and signs of abuse, evaluate how a series of actions and reactions might lead to abuse, recognize how abuse can be prevented. That's the key here, right? Preventing it. We, don't, we need to recognize that it's happened, we need to respond when it's happened, but the real key is to prevent it. And then we need to respond to abuse if you see it happening and report abuse and suspicion of a crime. So we're just going to review here real quick. The goal of this lesson is to understand the types and signs of abuse. So the CMS definition of abuse is willful infliction of injury. There's intent involved here. You intend to hurt someone. It's done on purpose with intent to injure. Unreasonable confinement is to detain or restrain or not allow someone to do something that they want to do. Intimidation is pressure or threatening or bullying or making a person feel fearful. So you can have, be doing something with good intentions sometimes, but it creates fear, and so you need to stop doing it if, if, if the person is safe. Punishment is discipline, scolding, telling them off. Deprivation of goods or services necessary to attain or maintain physical, mental, and psychosocial well-being means that you're going to take away or remove something that is of value to the elder. So what are some of the types of abuse? Verbal, mental, physical, sexual, neglect, involuntary seclusion, misappropriation of resident property. What are some signs that a resident may have been abused? When they recoil from you. Recoil or guarding, yeah. Mm -hmm. What else? Tremors. Tremor, shaking, yeah. Crying. Mm -hmm. Crying. How about withdrawal? Just blank look, staring straight ahead and not talking, mm -hmm. things like that. Really? Anything else? Bruises. 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 There's some physical symptoms of abuse. Going Skin into tears. the fetal position. Going into the fetal position. Skin tears. Skin tears. Yep. Bruising, skin tears, abrasions, things like that. So the physical signs would be bruises, scratches, pain. We may not be able to see the injury, but the elder has pain that we, we know nothing about. Fear of trembling, cowering, or acting submissive. Um, hesitating to talk or talking less. Loss of eye contact, vacant stares. Changes in mood or behavior and depression and crying, being suspicious of other people. I don't like him. Aggressiveness, being defiant, belligerent, hostile. You may be actually producing some behaviors because of, the, of your behavior or withdrawing. Any sort of changes in attitude toward a particular caregiver. And then nervousness or jumpiness or pulling away. So, we've talked about the types and the signs of abuse. So let's connect this with the previous uh, module that we talked about actions and reactions. We need to understand that abuse is sometimes, not always, but sometimes the result of a series of actions and reactions that could have been preventable. And it could be your actions or it, and the elder's response to that, or it can also be the elder's reaction and your response to it. Come on, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, I don't want to. Mrs. Wilson, stop it. You have to get your bath today. Mrs. Wilson, here we are. No. No. Mrs. Wilson. I don't now we have to get your nightgown off. Come on. It's okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get away, Mrs. Wilson, Bonnie. please. You have to take your bath today. You have to no. take your bath today. No, go away. 
Oh Miss Wilson, God, please what? stop Help! it. Help! Don't me! do that. Sit still. Stop, Miss Wilson. You have to take your bath today. Now stop it. Come on. You ever hear it? Is it abuse? Yes. Why? I'm forcing them. It's not a choice. Right. You're forcing her to do something she doesn't want to do. And it's actually putting you both in danger. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. So what kind of abuse did we see with Mrs. Wilson? Physical. Physical. Emotional. Mental. Emotional. She didn't want to. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Lots of uh, types of abuse going on in this kind of situation. So, Mrs. Wilson's reaction? Crying. Yeah, no, crying, no, no, no. The aide's action was to take her nightgown off. Mm -hmm. She know. forced it. Mm -hmm. You see the action and the reaction response here? We have the, the reaction and the action that caused the incident. Mrs. Wilson's reaction was, no, get away from me, yelling and crying. And so you have to take a bath. No, you're on my list. You have to take a bath today. Why? Why does she have to take a bath right now? Right now. And so her reaction was, no, go away, don't do that. And then the aide still focuses on the task, that task of bathing. Sit still, stop it. She transferred her against her will. You know she had to have a grip on her. And so Mrs. Wilson's reaction was crying and yelling. So do you suppose they do behavior monitoring on her? Mm -hmm. For what? Bath. Refusing baths. Refusing baths. Being tearful. <coughs> resisting mm -hmm. yeah so why did it happen it could have been health it could have hurt it could have hurt to take a bath to get in and out of the tub it could have hurt for any number of reasons it could have been meds it could have been the way that the aide communicated with her it could have been the task itself remember the story about the lady um, having been raped yeah, it could have been that bathing task in that room itself, unmet needs. I don't think bathing was one of her unmet needs. Then her life story, whatever, what is her history about this? What is her history with that particular nurse? And then how are you going to react to that? What is your response going to be? Okay, so we've learned that abuse is sometimes the result of a series of actions and reactions that could have been preventable. The goal of this lesson is to identify ways to respond to resident actions that might prevent a negative series of actions and reactions that led to abuse. So we have to put ourselves in their shoes. We have to be their voice. We have to look at our own actions. I can tell you that if you have somebody that develops a behavior, you need to do a root cause analysis on that behavior and see if it was something that you did that initiated that behavior. Then you have to know her so well. You have to know her and then you have to know you and what your reaction is going to be. One of the responses would be to try later. Good morning, Mrs. Wilson. It's Lisa. May I come in? Yes. Good morning. Hi. Um, hey, I have a wonderful bath ready for you. Uh, let's go. It'll feel so good. Uh, no. Uh, no, thank you. No. But Mrs. Wilson, this is the time I have for you. I don't want to take a bath right now. No! Okay, um... I'm sorry. I'll check back on you in a bit, okay? Oh, hey. Hey. 
Hey, I thought you were giving Mrs. Wilson her bath. Oh, no, not now. She doesn't want one right now. But um, I'm going to skip her and check back after Mr. Andrews. Good plan. See you later. All right, bye. So it was a good plan. Mm -hmm. Leave her alone and try later. Whatever is upsetting her may have been alleviated later, maybe not. So let's step into their world. Good morning, Mrs. Wilson. It's Lisa. May I please come in? Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Um, I have a wonderful bath ready for you. Let's go. It'll feel really good. No. I don't want one, thank you. No. I had a bath yesterday. Oh. Um, okay. Well, well, how about a shower today? No, I don't want one. All right. I'm sorry, Mrs. Wilson. Um, you know, how about I get some of that nice lavender lotion you really like? Okay. Yeah? Great. I'll be right back. Okay. Oh, hey. Hey, I thought you were giving Mrs. Wilson her bath. No, she said she had one yesterday. Uh, it's my day off. Did you give her back yesterday? Nope. I know she didn't get one. Her daughter was here with her all morning. Yeah, that's what I thought. I'm just going to help her wash up and get that new lavender lotion. You want to meet for lunch? Okay. See you later. All right. How many times have you been told I had one yesterday? Oh, yeah. And they didn't, mm -hmm. usually. But, yeah. The third, the third um, intervention might be to tag out. Good morning, Mrs. Wilson. It's Lisa. May I come in? Good morning, Mrs. Wilson. It's Lisa. Hey, I have a wonderful bath ready for you. Let's go. It'll, it'll feel really good. No. I don't want one. But Mrs. Wilson, this is the time I have for you. No! No! Ouch! No! Okay, okay. No! I'm sorry. I thought you were giving hey. Mrs. Wilson her bath. I'm supposed to be, but she just doesn't want me to. You know, I'm beat. I just, I can't, you know? Sometimes I just, I can't. Look, I know. You know, why don't we switch? I'll tag you out. You take Mrs. Henson. She loves baths anytime and by anybody. Yeah? Okay, um, I think I need Mrs. Henson right now. <laughs> No problem. Thanks. <laughs> Morning, Mrs. Wilson. May I come in? It's me, Gloria. Yes. You ever do that? Mm -hmm. You kind of trade? Remember when I told you that not everybody likes everybody? You don't get all everybody doesn't get along. They don't, there's just some sort of ambiance between the two of them. And we have to pay attention to that. Then the final intervention, the thing that might prevent abuse is to take a break. Walk away and just take a deep breath. Good morning, Mrs. Wilson. It's me, Lisa. May I please come in? Hi, I have a really wonderful bath ready for you. Come on, it'll feel really good. No, I don't want to. But Mrs. Wilson, this is the time I have for you. No, I don't want to. Oh, I hate this. I hate you. No, no. Okay, 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 okay.
<clears throat> Hi, Mrs. Wilson. It's me, Lisa. Can I come in? Yes. Hi. It's, it's me, Lisa. Hi. I just came to say hello. You know, I never noticed, but you have really pretty eyes. <laughs> yeah, is that your granddaughter there? Because she's got your eyes. Yes. I bet you're really proud of them. I am. Oh, I'm close to my grandmother, too, actually. <laughs> she practically raised me. So, what do you think she took out of her pocket? A picture of her kids or family. Might have been a picture of her kids or family. Her grandmother, maybe. Maybe her grandmother. Any other ideas? Maybe it was a scripture that was especially meaningful to her. Maybe, uh, you know, we don't know what. Maybe it was the mission statement of the organization. You know, written on a piece of paper. Because sometimes we just have to step back and remind ourselves of why we do what we do. And so I would suggest that you all have that something in your pocket that you can pull out and ground yourself right then before something bad happens. You walk away and you kind of ground yourself so that, you're, so that your reaction or the elder's reaction is not going to stimulate any potential abuse. So this time we have learned about responding in a way that prevents this, a, the series of negative actions that can lead to abuse. So responding to and reporting abuse. The goal here is to um, identify how to respond to abuse, including intervening at the moment getting the person safe, and how to report abuse and suspicion of a crime. State and federal laws require that abuse must be reported. By any of you, there are a specific list of people, anybody that works in the healthcare industry is included in that list, that you are a mandated reporter, you must report. You don't have to report, if you saw that abuse happened, you have to report that. Even if you think it happened, you report it, and then you tell somebody so the investigation can start. Nurse aides are the most likely to notice that the elder may be showing signs of abuse. Professionally and legally, nursing home staff is required to report immediately to the administrator. And when is that? Right then and there. Yes, what's the first thing we do? After the resident is safe, we report it to the administrator. Do not just count on your supervisor, your house supervisor, your nurse manager, whoever. Go, you can go and tell them, you should go and tell them, but then together you'll make the call because you are responsible for reporting it to the administrator. Um, you don't, in Kansas, you don't have to report to the ombudsman although you will likely want to get the ombudsman involved. How many of you know your ombudsman? Good. 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 I don't remember what her name is. If I saw her, I'd know who she was. You also must report to the local police. Likely the administrator is going to make that decision, but if they don't and you believe it should be reported, then you have a legal obligation to report it. Protective services you do not have to report to in Kansas, but the survey agency, the administrator, and ODON must report within 24 hours of the incident. So if you wait two days to tell the administrator, if it's a Friday afternoon and you wait two days, that's, that's 24 hours any time, weekend irregardless. Okay. And then they're going to investigate and send that investigation in within five days. You must report to both the agency and local law enforcement 
local law enforcement, if it is uh, if someone has been hurt or it is a major crime, must be reported within two hours, and anybody else no longer than 24 hours. The facility cannot. I just can't tell you this enough. Retaliate against you for calling for reporting suspected abuse. They cannot, and if they do, you need to notify the state agency. There have been tags written to facilities because they retaliated or they there was reasonable um, suspicion to believe that the facility retaliated against somebody who reported. Have any of you ever reported something? Good, good. You have that responsibility. How to report, who to report is gonna be the resident. The resident can certainly call. The nursing home, people responsible for the resident's care, like the durable power of attorney or their family. Um, you should ident you should ident indicate the identity of the person that you believe abused or neglected the person and anyone else that may have been affected and any witnesses. What is the nature and extent of the harm? Make sure that you're not just reporting physical harm. Uh, signs of abuse or neglect, what happened, statements by the resident and or others. It's vital, vital, vital that you ask the elder right away what happened. And then you're going to tell the date, time, and place. Brandy, I just checked and they still can't tell me whether or not I can take next Thursday off. Will you be able to fill in for me if I have to make it Wednesday instead? Oh sure, just let me know as soon as you know something. I will, thanks. You're the best. Not a problem, Connie. person leave the room. Would you say, I think you're abusing him? No, I would just say, um, ask them if they need help. Yeah, ask them if they need help and then just direct them to say, I got it from here. You know, I'll take care of it. Thank you. Why don't you go take a break? Yeah. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the first thing you're going to do. You're going to get the person to safety. Who would you report it to? Administrator. Yes. Is it okay to, uh, to notify your charge nurse? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely, it's okay, but your responsibility is to notify the administrator. So, the SAFE acronym is STOP the Abuse. Get the person to safety. Alert your administrator. Be a friend to the elder. If you have been abused, if you have dementia and someone has hurt you, they need somebody to give them a hug, right? and then react to any emergency. Okay, so this is this circle of abuse. So in the center, we have the person who is abused. Have any of you ever been abused that you're willing to share? You don't have to. But it doesn't, I, I have not really, but it doesn't feel very good. I cannot imagine that it would feel very good be abused. How would it feel to be the abuser? I think you would feel like you had some kind of power over him. Mm -hmm. You would have some kind of power. You do have some kind of power, don't you? We have power over our elders. And that's how it would feel. You're going to do it my way. And then we have the witnesses of the abuse. How does that feel? I can't imagine it would feel very good. To watch it? To watch somebody or to hurt see. someone else. No, I don't think it would. Would you be afraid? Maybe a little bit. Yeah. Maybe a little bit. I think it would be kind of scary to walk in there and say, 
um, I've got it from here. Why don't you go take a break? I've got this. Because you know what they're going to do. Does the other person know what you're going to do? What you're required to do? Yeah. So they may not... Uh, they may not be very happy with you walking by and seeing this. Um, I taught abuse and neglect and exploitation last week in, an, in another facility, and the administrator gave an example. It happened in another state. And the elder was um, had had a stroke, had a G-tube, and a nurse aide was caring for the elder. And the, the nurse aide was very tall, so she laid the person in the bed or she sat the person on the side of the bed and she raised the bed up to the, as high as it would go because that was comfortable for her. She didn't want the back strain. Well, in that whole process, the G-tube came disconnected. So she reached down to get the G-tube to reconnect it and the elder fell off the side of the bed, flat on her face. The um, nurse aide there was no physical, except there was a little bleeding from one ear. There was a lot of bleeding, eventually, from that ear. The nurse aide called, and her friend, her very best friend, came in to help. And she said, please don't report me, because I, I'll lose my job, and I've got, I'm a single parent. I, I, please don't report me. So they cleaned up everything. There was blood on the walls and the mattress and there was so the administrator was in his office and the director of nursing said went to his office and said you need to come and see this and he was on the phone and he said I'll be go check it out I'll be right there she took the phone from him placed it on the cradle and said you need to come now so he did he knew something serious they got there and they were sopping up the blood out of the ear with a sheet. That's how much it was bleeding. Not any other sign. And nobody said anything about how this happened. Well, the lady went to the hospital. She had a very severe brain bleed. And so as they were investigating the incident, they said, there's no way that this could have just been distorted. There's no way that this just spontaneously started to bleed out of her ear this much. So they started investigating, and they, the little four foot eight housekeeping supervisor got dumpster dove and got, because what the nurse aides did was they gathered up all the bloody linen and put it in a dumpster. And so they found that, and finally the friend said, okay, here's what happened. And then the person that was in the room said, okay, here's what happened. She went to jail. She went to jail because she tried to hide it. The police were called. They had the tape all over everywhere. They, had, they did the powder where they the illumination stuff and there was blood all over that room even though it had been, they tried to clean it up but she was trying to protect her friend now the friend the girl who did it went to jail the other girl lost her certificate don't hide it always tell the truth had they just been up front and told what happened it would have been a very unfortunate situation but it would have been an accident. But the fact that they hid it was the real big issue. Now, the durable power of attorney happened to be the district attorney. Mm, yes. Hmm. Could it get any worse? <laughs> so he told the administrator, okay, I'm not going to do anything about this, but you're not going to let this happen again, are you? And he said, no, no. My comment during the presentation was, he can't promise that. Because an administrator is not in the building 24-7. Mm -hmm. And bad things happen. Accidents happen. People fall. But this was not an intentional thing. This was a neglect thing. But don't hide it. Okay. How about it? There, now you're the person who hears about this from somebody else. Now what's your response going to be? Did anybody report it? Good. 
Did anybody report it? Are you going to tell anybody else? I'd go straight to the administrator. Good. Go straight to the administrator. Talk to somebody who can fix it. Don't talk. Don't. Otherwise, it becomes gossip. Right? Mm -hmm. And it can be very inflammatory, and you could be in a lot of trouble. And then we have the person who saw the behavior of the resident or the signs of abuse. You need to report that immediately to your administrator. Okay, so what if your loved one were living in the nursing home? What if she was being abused? What would you do? We heard this morning some of you would take them out, right? Your heart would be broken, wouldn't it? Definitely. They trusted you. Yeah. Yeah. What if the abuser is your best friend? Yeah. <laughs> what? So we wouldn't be friends anymore. Yeah. Best friend would get hit by a bus. <laughs> <laughs> the best friend would get hit by a bus. I think you're going to have a little bigger legal problem. <laughs> Even though it's our friends, we still have a mission. We have to do what's in the best interest of the elders. Okay, so in this lesson we've learned how to respond to abuse in the moment, which is get the person to safety, and how to report any suspicion. Okay, so in this whole module we've learned to identify the types and signs of abuse. Are you comfortable with this? This is an important thing. CMS put two modules about abuse in. It's important. Are you comfortable with this? Evaluate how a series of actions and reactions might lead to abuse. You see how that works? Recognize how abuse might be prevented through different approaches. We learned tag out, we learned take a break, we learned wait, leave and come back. All of those tactics to prevent it. And then respond to abuse if you see it happening and report it. Report it. Any questions or comments? Okay.